Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi, you guys. Thank you for joining me on tonight's Egg Whisperer show. The topic is fertility myth busting. I educate patients every single day in my office, and that's why I'm bringing you this show so I can talk to you about things that you might think that are actually true. I hope that you learn a lot from tonight's show. So here we go, fertility myth busting. I feel like a rapper some days because not only do I talk in three letter words like IVF, FSH, estradiol, AMH, I also, Paula's taking pictures over there for me. It's very distracting right now, but that's okay. She still is going to have a job here. Okay, here we go. Fertility myth number one. I hear this all the time, and I have patients that present their hormone levels to me, and they say the following. Oh, Dr. Amy, my hormone levels tell me that I don't need IVF. Well, if you know me, you know I talk in hashtags also, and the hashtag that I'm going to save to that is hashtag tushy method. Of course your fertility hormone levels can't tell you if you need IVF. There's no possible level that can tell you that. I want everyone to get pregnant as naturally as possible without my help, but at the end of the day, the hormone levels are just diagnostic tools. What tells you if you need IVF is a combination of your age, your levels, your desired family size goals, if your tubes are open, if the sperm is low, if you share common genetic mutations. Those are the things that require you to do IVF for the most part. So at the end of the day, get your levels checked, but also do everything else as well and see a doctor Don't post your stats on a Facebook message board and think that that's in place of an expert opinion. So find someone like me who's gonna talk to you about your numbers and what your personal goals are so that you're successful as soon as possible. Okay, here we go. Number two, this one actually happened this week, so that's why I'm bringing it to you on tonight's show. Dr. Amy, I didn't get the sperm checked because I was told by my doctor that you have to be trying a really long time before you can get sperm checked. I'm sorry. Like. No, 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 and no. The reason is this. You don't have to have, uh, be spending or wasting so much time before trying to get simple things checked. And getting the sperm checked is so easy. It's basically a cup, maybe a movie. (laughs) I'm trying to be funny. I clearly need to keep my day job. But at the end of the day, this is serious stuff. And there are really cool do-it-yourself kits now that you can get, and I promise you that you won't put your sperm on your phone by doing it, ha ha ha. But there's a test called Yo Sperm Test. Maybe that's why I feel like a yap, uh, yapper, a rapper tonight, because I knew I was gonna talk about the Yo 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 Sperm Test. I am not friends with, maybe I, I know the people who started the company because I follow them and I think that their test is awesome, but now men have no excuse for not getting their sperm checked. It's super easy. You can do it from home. You can watch a video of it literally like on your phone and you can show it to me, your doctor, and then I can tell you whether you need a more advanced test than the one that that test offers you. But no matter where you live, now people have really easy tools that they can do to look at their sperm and see if the sperm quality is good or not and what you can do to make things even better as soon as possible. You don't want to be that person that finds out after a year of trying that there's no sperm and there there's a genetic reason and that can have an easy solution to it. That would be super, super frustrating. Imagine learning like 12 12 months of time just wasted. I want to prevent that from happening. So that's why I'm doing this show so you can learn about this stuff and use these tools at home if you think that they're useful for you. Okay, number three. What did I think of for number three? Here, menopause is really hard to pinpoint. There's no point even checking levels to find out more. No, menopause is really simple. It's something that's been around forever. You know, it takes about six years or so to go through it. You usually start when you're 40. I feel sorry for all my employees in my office because I have the air on at 66 and they're all in ski jackets walking around me. And that is the truth. I feel sorry for them. I feel like getting them poles walking around my office. But at the end of the day, menopause is not a mystery. It literally takes years to go through. There are levels that you can check. You know what those levels are. The three letter words, FSH, AMH, you get them checked. They tell you when your menopause is. It is not a mystery. No woman should find out that she's in menopause when she's about to start her family, right? That is not fair. That is off the hook unfair. We gotta start teaching women about the egg whisperer golden rules. I talk about them on my show all the time. I won't bore them. Well, maybe I will bore you with them right now, but 
At the end of the day, get your levels checked by the time you're 25. Earlier, if you have a family history of early menopause or if you've had one ovary removed or your mom needed fertility medications to get pregnant with you. If you're, let's say, 32 years old and you're not done with your family and you have one kid but want a second, maybe consider preserving embryos and not eggs if you still like your partner. <laughs> okay, and then if you're 37 and have one kid, definitely don't spend too much time trying to get your fertility levels checked and see a doctor because at the end of the day, your fertility is precious. I thought actually about doing some sort of fertility is thing to see what you guys would think it is, but for me, it is precious. It's so important to educate people about and it's heartbreaking. When you find out that you're in menopause, when you see me for the first time, and I don't like being that person to give you that kind of news. I'm a very positive person. I like to build people up and tell them what they can do to help them reach their goals. And I certainly don't wanna be um, educating people about their menopause when they're ready to start their family because that's just not fair to either one of us when we spend so much time in doctor's offices over the years starting at a very young age like when we're 21. Okay, let's go to number four. Number four. All you need to do is IVF when you're over 40 to get pregnant. It's just that easy. Hmm, I wish. I wish it was that easy. If only it were that easy. You hear me talk about Botox for ovaries. There's no such thing. A patient told me today, you know, Dr. Amy, I thought that since I looked so young on the outside that my fertility was the same. Why didn't anyone tell me that when I was 35? Why didn't they tell me that when I was 38? I happened to meet my husband when I was 43 and that's when I found this out. I'm a very educated woman. I'm channeling all these patients' energies right here now in this show because I get fired up about this. I get riled up, I get fired up because I want to make sure that people know these things as soon as possible. So you're not surprised that IVF just means, you know, taking an egg and I can't change the genetics of that egg, putting it with a sperm cell, making an embryo and hoping that it's a genetically normal embryo. And at the end of the day, each embryo has about a 10% chance of being genetically viable at the age of 40. And I can't change that. I have my special sauce. Believe me, I do. I got my hocus pocus things that I like to put patients on that I think might help. I have my strategy and my protocols, but I know that I don't have the power of changing DNA. Even though I, I, I try my very best to do that, I don't have anything more than the basic stuff that a lot of other people have too. Okay, number five, what do I have here? This is my favorite. And I get all, you know what I'm gonna say, I get all riled up when I see Instagram ads about how egg freezing is about control. Egg freezing gives you the sense and false sense of control. So I'm gonna read this. Egg freezing means taking control of your fertility. It guarantees you a successful pregnancy in the future. You can have it all. Egg freezing is really a chance for pregnancy. It might give you the illusion of control. It might make you feel like you can have it all. But the reality is, it's very important to consider making embryos while you still have eggs. Because I see women now, they come to me at let's say 46 and they froze their eggs when they were 37 and none of their eggs were viable. And now they have no eggs left and no one talked to them about these really important things. So freeze more if you need to, especially if you're going into you know, the, the years of when menopause starts, which is 40. Um, it's super important to think about those things and, and talk to your doctors using online egg calculators too, so you know the percentage rates of success with the eggs that you have frozen. And pay such close attention to sperm too when you're ready to freeze, I'm sorry, when you're ready to thaw your precious eggs. Talk about all of these things ahead of time because you don't wanna look back and be like, ah, why didn't I do that first before I thawed my eggs? Why didn't I do that first when I still had eggs? So I'm hoping that you realize too that this is a fertility myth. Egg freezing gives you the illusion of control, but the reality is getting your levels checked certainly gives you a sense of understanding, understanding what your fertility is. Um, some other word I thought I was gonna say, a really silly word there. Good thing I caught myself first. Okay, number six. IVF medications increase your egg count. They do not. They don't. When I see a patient who's 43, she comes to my office, she has three eggs, she says, good. I'm gonna start IVF medications and then I'm gonna have 10 because that's what I heard, that the medications increase your egg count. They don't. IVF medications allow you to ovulate more than just the one egg that that you have the potential to ovulate each month. If you have the potential to ovulate three, hopefully you can grow three and get those to the mature stage. The other myth, and it's not on here, is that uh, patients um, don't understand 
that they have to take the medication. So they think that you actually don't need to take drugs when you have a lot of eggs, because if you have a lot of eggs, they're there. You can just put a needle in and get them out. We, we aren't able to do that. You still have to take medications. So realize what your numbers are. I talk about the IVF attrition pyramid by Dr. Azadi. I've posted that before. Super important to look at that pyramid so you know when you have a certain number of follicles, what are the number of mature eggs that you expect out? Of those mature eggs, what is the number of fertilized eggs that will come from there? The number of blastocysts you expect from each cycle and how many are gonna be normal, okay? So when you're doing IVF, you don't wanna be disappointed that your three eggs didn't turn into 10. And if you thought that that was actually something that's gonna happen, you're gonna be really upset. And I don't like people that are upset. Number seven, I talk about genetic testing all the time with my patients. I offer it to everyone. You know why? Because I want everyone to know about it and I want everyone to know what the limitations are. So this is what I say to patients. Did you know that you can test your embryos for chromosomes? You can do genetic testing on them. And then oftentimes patients will say, yes, I heard that genetic testing is 100% guaranteed for a healthy pregnancy. And the answer is, it is not. With the chromosome testing, you just heard me say that magic word, chromosome testing, all you can check are chromosomes. I can't check genes. I can't tell you what the baby's eye color is gonna be. I can't change the baby's eye color either. I can't tell you about traits like that. All I can tell you is with, will the embryo basically have an extra piece of a chromosome or not? And talk to your doctor about those limitations and listen to my show on PGT. I did one a couple weeks ago. Number eight, we're almost done. I love this stuff, but I know you guys probably have better things to do than listen to me, and I wanna make sure you tune in till the very, very end, because the last one's gonna be really good. You can pick a male or female embryo through IVF, and you can't. You can't do that. You can create an embryo, and then if you're so lucky and you wanted a choice, you can have the choice, but doing IVF just for gender is very, very involved and tricky, and there are things that you need to think about first. What are you gonna do if you have embryos that are the gender that you didn't want? What are you gonna do with them first? These are the things that I talk to my patients about because sometimes patients blame me. They say things like, well, Dr. Amy, what are you gonna do next time to make sure that that female embryo is normal or on the other, on the other side, what are you gonna do to make sure that male embryo is normal? And I have to tell people that these are things that we don't have control over. We cannot spin sperm for gender. No matter what you read online, we cannot. And there was, and I, I posted it and then I took it down because it made it seem like I was angry. There was this uh, study that was posted and it was a clickbait, clickbait title. And the clickbait title is, women who are more stressed in pregnancy have more girls. And I was like, uh, no. So basically, that, that's not true, but I digress. My point is this. If you want a male embryo, sometimes it might take you two, three cycles to get that. And your doctor has no control over whether that embryo is gonna be male or female. Nothing in the lab will sway the, the situation for you in either direction. Just talk to your balls. If you want a boy, wear blue that day. If you want, wear, if you want a girl, wear pink. <laughs> this is what happens when you've been up since five in the morning. You start laughing at your own jokes, but I think I'm rather funny. Okay, number nine. You have to do three to six cycles of IUI before you can do IVF. No one, needs you, no one needs to give you permission for what you need to do to have a baby. Um, diagnosis before treatment, that's the egg whisper away. Find out what the problem is, see what you can do that's in your control to make things even better, and then go do it. For example, if your tubes are blocked, obviously you don't need to do IUI. I have seen people do it. I've seen patients with blocked tubes on hysterosalpingograms they believe that they had to do IUI first because that's, that, that's what they were told, but in their gut, they knew that that wasn't true. So speak up for yourself and talk and just say, you know, this is what I think I need. And if you don't feel like you are getting what you need, get a second opinion, find another doctor if you can. Number 10, IVF makes a woman go through menopause earlier. These are the things that I hear from patients. They say things like, I went through IVF, you know, they got five eggs from me and you know and that's why I'm in menopause now because it, it happens sooner because you know five months and the answer is no that's not what IVF does I I would wear a Baywatch bathing suit right now but you don't want to see me in that because I haven't shaved <laughs> armpits is what I'm talking about armpits <sighs> sorry I'm so funny today I cannot control myself the reality <laughs> everyone's laughing here did you hear that that's that's not mice scurrying around. Those are laughs from my producer and my director. But IVF does not make a woman go through menopause earlier. The reason why I'm talking about a bathing suit is because I actually love the Baywatch movie, the new one with The Rock. That, that 
That movie just makes me like pee my pants laugh every single time I see it. I might have seen it already three times. There's a scene where the guy gets stuck with the, with the beach chair. You have to watch it. I tell my patients to watch it after their transfers because it's so funny. Again, I digress. Back to menopause, I'm an egg rescuer. That's what we do as fertility doctors. We're educators, we're myth busters, and I apparently think I'm a rapper, but we also throw out little life vests to the eggs and save them. We're not helping you go through menopause sooner. Super important for you to know that. And number 11, after an IVF pregnancy, this is another myth, your chances of having a natural pregnancy go up. You guys, even my patients believe that. They do. Patients who I've seen, I've helped them. You know, I, I help them go through IVF and then they wait two years and they're like, but Dr. Amy, our, our doctor told us that since you helped us with IVF, we're going to be more fertile afterwards. And I'm like, huh? Like, do you not watch my show? <laughs> Clearly they didn't, but now they're going to because this one's going to be so funny and everyone's going to be talking about me. Um, so that's not what I want, but I'm really glad you guys are still watching and I hope you're still watching tonight because the next one's going to be really, really funny. After an IVF pregnancy, your chances of having a natural pregnancy go up. Never tell your neighbor that, please. You know, the holidays are coming up. Don't like whisper that to people and be like, yeah, yeah, you're going to be fine. This is what, you know, my friends did and they did IVF and then they got pregnant naturally after. That's not fair because as time passes, things get harder, <laughs> no pun intended. Our fertility levels change over time and I wish they got better. But especially if you're over 37, your fertility rates decline a lot faster than if you're, let's say, between the ages of 30 and 31. You guys, I lied. This is the last one. There's no last one. I just wanted you guys to watch. And I thought maybe I would come up with a really good joke, but it's just not here tonight. So thank you guys for watching Fertility Busting 101 by Dr. Amy, the fertility rapper here in the San Francisco Bay Area, bringing you <laughs> three letter words. And I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show and you learned a lot. And no matter what you're going through right now, know that there's a huge community around you. You're never alone. And make sure to build your fertility team as you're going through this process. I hope you guys have a great night and peace out. Talk to you soon. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor.